Uh, so obviously not the final result that you were hoping for as a team, uh, but I was curious if you could talk a little bit about how the team's mentality comes into this, knowing, I mean, the World Cup last year was such a huge event and such a you know, really exciting experience. Um, how they kind of came into this and how they're thinking about the process of knowing they're not going to get a chance to go to the next big tournament. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, we're still a, you know, in terms of getting to that next level, you know, we're still looking to, to grow the program and, and obviously you sit back and kind of evaluate some of the things from this tournament. Um, what, what I'm really proud of this group is, is, is the kind of way that they responded and kind of challenged them. And look, I, I, we know they're we're more capable than what we showed the other night versus Canada. And, and more importantly, we kind of spoke about is, is that process and how you deal with setbacks and, and how you respond. And, and I was really pleasantly surprised and on, on how they responded the last couple of days um, to kind of keep building um, you know, on the momentum and kind of leave, you know, leave the tournament you know, on a high note so we can keep moving on. And w without a doubt, we know that we need to kind of continue to, to play games and, and, and progress the program and, and, and look for the opportunities to where we can be better. Um, but overall, obviously, they're disappointed that they haven't been able to move on. But I think, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, to be able to play and, and, and compete at that next level, we need some consistent performances and we need to get, to be get together more often than, than we have in the past. Yo, coach, good evening. Uh, Ray from South Texas Water Sports. Uh, seven nothing win. You you guys seem to continue to press the ball a lot in the second half and and come away with the victory. But uh, talk about some of the, uh, some of the performances that stood out to you individually. Well, as a collective, I, I definitely think you know what I was pleased to see is, is some of the younger players come in. I think that was great. Um, obviously, made her debut. Uh, Gabrielle Farrell came on and, and did a great job, and that's always great for for a coach to see is how young players come in and. and really who's pushing to kind of influence this core and group moving forward because that's really how we continue to build and how do we deep you know continue to grow our pool of players um, and again the only way that we're going to get better is to be able to play more games more often and, and for us to come together as a group so that we're not you know learning and going through mistakes when we're playing like the eighth ranked team in the world and so those things are always difficult because you're you know you can't be learning on on the job sometimes you got to be able to go away and play some friendlies and come back and when you come into competitions where you actually trying to qualify you have some confidence and some uh, continuity in, in terms of your performance and in terms of uh, continuing with with the program and, and the growth that that it's had uh, what are some just some of the biggest obstacles just moving forward trying to uh, get more games in and Try, try and do is establish uh, a bigger core of a group for you guys. Yeah, look, I think we have to be honest. I mean, there's there's a, there's a massive gap between the Mexico's, the Canada's, and the USA's in terms of financial support, you know. And, and I think obviously uh, our federation is trying to do their part, but really, you know, we're, we're relying a lot on our sponsors. We're relying, relying a lot on. Our ambassador, Sadella Marley, you know, who's obviously played a huge part in obviously helping this program continue. Um, so, yeah, you know, we've always said that, you know, we're hopeful that corporate Jamaica and, and corporate sponsors can come on to be able to grow it. And then obviously that allows us to do some things in, in Jamaica that allows us to grow our grassroots program so we can have more players coming through at that level. But, you know, make, you know, make no mistake about it. It really is about the ability for us to to be able to finance these games and, and be going and traveling and having extended periods of camp that really kind of separates us from the rest right now. And, and I think if we can kind of do those things and only till we do those things till we, till we truly understand how much, you know, how, rather how far we can go as a program. But unless we're doing those things, unfortunately, I think that the, the gap is going to continue um, between the haves and the have nots. And so I think obviously, I believe CONCACAF is doing a good job on their part to try to bring up some of the, the smaller nations. But as you can see, it's, it's really, you know, a lot in a lot of cases, the, the four teams who have advanced are the four teams with the most most uh, backing financially um, and so everybody else is, needs to kind of put their house in order um, to be able to close that gap. Right. Uh, so we've been talking about CONCACAF and JFF. I, I'm curious if you have had conversations as a group about where 
players are going for their club careers, college careers, like Bunny's off in France, um, you know, Shayna and Kayla are in the NWSL, and Chin is everywhere in the world. Pretty yeah, much. no. I'll, is, that, I'll, is there a conversation about where Absolutely. We had those individual meetings today um, because as people get ready to go on their own ways in terms of, hey, what, what are you doing next? Because truly, to, truly, until we were a program where we have players who are, we, we can no longer have players in senior national team who are unattached. You know, that we have to be able to phase that out and, and players, obviously, if you're not on a professional club, you need to be. And obviously, uh, if you're in college, that's a different scenario. Um, but what are you doing when you're not with us? And so we can monitor your progress. And, and obviously, one of the things we're trying to do is try to help place our kids overseas, the ones who can't play in the NWSL, so that we're playing, uh, that they are playing and, and training week in and week out and playing matches for nine months. And that's the only way that they're going to get better and become professionals. And, you know, seeing what that has done to our professionals who are in our program is, is tremendous because obviously they bring that back to the younger players in which they, they provide us as ro role models and inspiration to what what's actually needed to be a professional. And so we're still in those beginning stages. And so we're hopeful that that's one of the things that we can work on in, in placing our players in environments where they can truly be professional all year round. Uh, last one for me, I've got to ask, do you think CONCACAF women's soccer would benefit something like from a League of Nations with the exception of the top four countries like your Mexico's, US, Canada, and Costa Rica? 100%. And I'm really hopeful that comes in. I mean, obviously, we've heard that there's it's in the pipelines, possibly them to do it. Like I said, I think, you know, obviously, uh, Karine LeBlanc and everyone on that staff has done a fantastic job of promoting the game. Um, obviously, this tournament has been, been well run. Um, and yeah, that, that needs to happen because, again, you know, uh, the best uh, country in the world uh, and obviously the best in our region, the USA, and they're only going to get better when the other countries in this region become better. Um, they have the resources to go and play these games, but the reality is, as I know, they want as well, and, and they're very uh, supportive of, of the countries in the CONCACAF becoming better. So if we can have, uh, obviously, the nations, uh, a, a league for, for the players to, to, to come together and, and they can play within those, those years, then I think that just benefits the region and benefits the growth of football in general.